Now, let's go on then to Twisted Scripture number 19. This is probably the most misquoted verse in the Bible. Judge not lest ye be judged. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Go over there with me in your Bibles, and here's what we read. Judge not, this is Jesus speaking, by the way, judge not that you be not judged. Now again, this is Jesus speaking, and uh, this verse is used again and again out of context. This is not saying that we are not to judge. This is saying how you are to judge. To get the full context, you can't just stop with Matthew 7, verse 1. You've got to keep reading if you want the full context. It's not saying not to judge. It's telling you how to judge. It's telling you don't judge harshly. Don't ju judge unlovingly. Don't judge as a hypocrite. Don't judge with wrong motives. So the only kind of judging it's saying don't do is unbiblical judging. But it is calling for us then to go on and judge, but judge righteously, judge with pure motives, judge with love. Let's look at it in full context. Don't just stop with verse one, go on to verse two. Here's what we read. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. In other words, if you are harsh with someone, they're gonna turn and be harsh back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own. So uh, you could be talking about like a splinter, a speck or a splinter. That, that's not a small thing. To have a speck in your eye, you think, well, that's something small. It's a trivial sin. That's not saying that. Something in your eye is a big deal. Uh, if, if another translation uses a splinter, if you have a splinter in your eye, that's a pretty big deal. So it's not just saying, oh, you're talking about someone's trivial little problem. No, it's not saying that. It's just giving contrast to say, a speck is a big deal. If you've got a speck in your eye or a splinter in your eye, that's a big deal. But if you've got a beam in your eye or a plank in your eye, well, that's a really big deal, right? But it's simply saying, go and, and, and deal with the sin in your life before you take notice or go and judge someone for the speck or the splinter in their life. Both are wrong, okay? Both are wrong. But it's simply saying, don't be a hypocrite is what it's simply saying. The verse goes on, or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye. And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. So in other words, that's the word, hypocrite. Don't be hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye. And then, see, it's not saying don't judge. It's saying, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. If we were called not to judge, it would say, then don't go get the speck or the splinter out of your brother's eye. But it says that once you have made sure that you're not being a hypocrite, then go deal with the sin problem that they might have. Might have. But deal with your own sin problem first. Don't be a hypocrite. So it's saying first and foremost, that judge reasonably. Don't judge harshly. Don't be a hypocrite. Judge with pure motives. All right, that's what it's saying. In fact, if you go over to John, John chapter 7, verse 24, John chapter 7, verse 24, speaks also about judging. John chapter 7, verse 24. All right, here's what we read. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. All right, judge with righteous judgment. So again, we're to judge. It doesn't say don't judge. It says judge, but judge righteously. In fact, if you go over to Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, here's what we read. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Okay, so they're being haughty. They're being self-righteous. And he says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You see, Jesus is speaking to the issue of humility of not being like that Pharisee who say, I am righteous, and these other people, I despise them. They're horrible sinners. They're, let's list off all the sins that they're involved in. 
but I, I'm, I am above, I'm above reproach, I am righteous, when really they are not righteous. In fact, he was an unbeliever. The Pharisee was an unbeliever. So Jesus is pointing this out and saying, don't, well, there's many lessons here, but one would be simply be, don't be like that. Don't be self-righteous and condemn other people when you yourself need to look at your own life and examine your own life. And that's what the scriptures tell us, isn't it? To examine our own lives, our own life and make sure that we're in the faith. Okay? In fact, we're called to judge truth from error. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus goes on to call certain people wolves, uh, uh, dogs, pigs, and wolves in sheep's clothing. He goes in to call certain people dogs, pigs, and wolves in sheep's clothing. That very same chapter, Matthew chapter 7. Another reason we know we're called to judge or to reason or discern that which is right or wrong, that which is truth or error, is because of many other verses like Romans chapter 16 verse 17 which says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to doctrine by which you learned and avoid them. You see what it's saying there? Note them. Another translation might say, mark them who cause divisions doctrinally and avoid them. Mark them. You got to identify them. You got to know what is truth and what is error. And then mark those who are causing these divisions or these offenses that are contrary to biblical truth, biblical theology and doctrine and avoid them. So you got to know who's in error right? The Bible says there must be divisions among us to know who is approved of God. So we're called to mark error. We're called to point out error. We're called to distinguish truth from that which is not true. And to do that, you have to judge or you have to make a reasonable judgment or decision or have discernment to do that. In fact, when you look at the qualifications for an elder, we're told in the scriptures, these are the qualifications of an elder. These are not the qualifications of an elder. If someone is practicing this kind of lifestyle, if someone is exhibiting this kind of fruit, then they are not qualified to be an elder. Well, how do you determine if someone meets the qualities or qualifications of an elder? You have to judge. You have to reason. You have to discern. Hello, I'm Brandon House, and I want to invite you to check out The Situation Room at situationroom.net. It's all brand new. The Situation Room is the world's premier biblical worldview online radio and television network. In The Situation Room, that's all brand new, as of April of 2013, you're going to find thousands of MP3s. You'll find every one of our Worldview Weekend radio programs since we began that broadcast in September of 2007. You'll also find every episode of the Worldview Weekend Hour television program. But you'll also find the radio program of people like Chris Pinto with Noise of Thunder, Chris Rosebro of Fighting for the Faith, uh, Mike Gendron is starting a brand new radio program. You'll find Dr. Jimmy DeYoung on Bible prophecy. Uh, we have a brand new radio show that we're starting up with Carl Tycrib. You'll find the Bible teaching of people like Dr. John Whitcomb. Uh, you'll find the teaching program of Pastor Jesse Johnson, and the list goes on and on. You'll find all of this at situationroom.net, MP3s, and then the TV shows as well that we have on our website. You can watch it on your iPhone, your Android, your iPad. You can watch it through what's called Roku, R-O-K-U, Roku, or you can watch it through your Xbox on your flat screen television. Again, the Situation Room is over $25,000 in growing in biblical worldview resources, MP3s, TV programs, DVDs, eBooks, audiobooks, and a lot more. Check it out, won't you? Situationroom.net. That's situationroom.net. The world's premier online biblical worldview radio and television network where members understand the times through a biblical worldview. So Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 is not saying don't judge. He's giving us the biblical priority or the biblical parameters for doing just that, making biblical judgments, all right? Let's move on then. Twisted Scripture number 20. Ma go to Matthew chapter 22. Here's what we read. Matthew chapter 22. Go to verse 37 through 40. Here's what we read. 